in order to model check your Pascal algorithm, which contains, if you remember, we got the uh, extents, constants, and axiom that we define, and also the main body of the algorithm itself, which contains any helper procedure over here, and also what's really specified inside the main program brackets over here. In order to model check this construct or algor algorithmic construct over here, you cannot model check it directly, meaning that only getting the Pascal algorithm written down is not enough. You need to do one more step. But luckily, that step can be automated by the tool that we are using. But you have to do a button click every time you actually modify the algorithm. I will do the translation for the very first time together with you, and then I'm gonna draw some conceptual visualization about what's really happening over here. You, you, uh, people first using the TRW Plus tool, they can easily get confused. What should be done by them manually and what can be really done for them automatically. You really want to distinguish between these two. All right, let's take a look. So you can see over here, we have no other construct except for the Pascal algorithm that we wrote in the previous part of the tutorial. Let's now do the following. All you're going to do is go under file and then translate Pascal algorithm, right? As soon as you actually wrote some algorithm, you will be able to translate the algorithm into something different. Okay, let's take a look. If I click on that, and you can see it seems like nothing has happened, right? If you actually got this kind of a reaction from the IDE, it's a good sign. That means there was no error. There's no parsing error. You can also see the spec status over here is parsed, green light. If you got any errors that might occur in your algorithm definition, you will have to fix it before the tr uh, translation can be completed successfully. All right, but in my case, the translation was successful. You can see nothing seemed to have happened, but indeed something actually happened. Let's take a look. If you go towards the end, if you remember this star and also closing parenthesis was the end of the algorithm, if you remember, right? And also before we hit the translation button, after line number, let me be precise, before we did a translation, after line number 57, we went directly to line one to one, which is the equal sign to really end you know, the entire algorithm specification, right? But now something actually has been inserted in between automatically after I have hit this translate plus count algorithm. That's number one, you will have to note very carefully, okay? Let's take a look and let's see what's really in between. Let me try to highlight exactly what has been done. You can see there is one line in line number 58, the begin translation. And there's something about checksum. And for those of you who may have taken a network course before, checksum is really for you to really uh, timestamp about certain tasks. So in this case, the translation from Pascal into the so-called TLA plus specification over here that's automatically generated, the translation can be done anytime you like. So anytime, every time you try to do the translation by the button click, the checksum over here, like a timestamp, will be changed accordingly as well. It will be guaranteed to be something that's unique, just to make sure you always uh, get the latest translation from the latest algorithm written in Pascal. All right, let's now just highlight about this part over here that's being translated. You can see over here, all the way to over here until the end translation. What I just have highlighted over here, this is the part you can automatically generate from your plus count algorithm just by the button click, right? And let's now just clarify about what's happening over here. And then I'll show to you what we have right now, you can see label one. So LBL here stands for label. So label one and also label two. So these are basically like a state names that uh, that represent the underlying state machine that's going to be model check. Remember I mentioned in the earlier part, what model checker will do is try to build a state diagram like a graph so that we can systematically explore every state in the graph. And you can think about label two, label three, MLN, different names over here, they're simply the names of the nodes or the names of the state that will be explored later. But the label two here, label one here, and also label three over here, they're not really informative. We'll rather have some 
more informative label names, which we can definitely encode manually as a designer. That's something I also, also want to show you before I go ahead and, and explore what each so-called TLA predicates is really supposed to mean. With the current label names, it's not so meaningful to really talk about it. It can just further confuse you. I'll rather add some labels to our source Pascal program and then try to regenerate the retranslate the Pascal algorithm with all the refreshed label names rather than label one, but with something that's more informative. And then I'll explore what exactly the uh, the predicate here really need to give you some idea, right? Before I do that, I would like to clarify exactly what is supposed to be done by you manually and what can be done for you automatically, right? That's something you want to always keep in mind as at least for this course, okay? So what we have is this. I'll try to also cross-reference back whenever needed. Think about this is the entire module file you have developed over here, right? It could be a uh, bridge controller m0.tla, right? I'll just write it for short, not the full name. So this would be a module. And what we started with in the very beginning of the tutorial series was we actually got this separator over here and also the equal sign separator over here at the end over here. Let's annotate them first, right? So you actually got one, two, three, four, doesn't matter. So here, this will be the module header. For example, it will be just M0, and which will correspond to M0.tla, right? something like that. And also at the end, you also got an equal sign, right? You can see I'm just trying to draw some correspondence over here, right? So what we said before was, what you, you could do was, you can write some comments that would not be, uh, that would simply be ignored by the tool, right? Outside the range of these two separators. You can think about this part over here, right? You can see above, and also below, which we said, you might write some answers to some written question over here, right? So what I put over here in pink. So these are some comments you can write manually. And also this would be some comments or answers to some written question you can also put as well. So far we talk about this part here and this part here. These two parts are meant to be manual, which means you can put stuff whenever necessary. So what's gonna happen inside over here? So what's inside over here, if you recall, we have to first define the preparation, uh, like a pre-processing kind of stuff, like a uh, extents, constant, and also axiom before we declare the algorithm, right? Let me just note that down for you. You have to define extents. Also you're gonna do x uh, constant and also axiom. things like that, right? And then you're going to write your algorithm declaration, which will start with over here, right? This will be your algorithm, right? Let me just uh, write it down. So the start of the algorithm with this, these two symbols, if you recall, and then dash dash algorithm whatever the name it is, and whatever helper procedure or any, uh, and also the main body, right? I'm gonna ignore that part. That part you have already done. And also to end the algorithm, if you remember, is going to be the star and also closing parenthesis, right? So that'll be something you will also have to write manually yourself. And after we have done any intermediate version of our algorithm, we can choose to translate it into the so-called TLA plus predicates or TLA plus specification, right? So what's gonna happen is by clicking on that translate button over there, let me just remind you what which button here, right? Just remember once you have done with your algorithm, you can simply say file over here and then translate plus cal algorithm. You can hit on this button here as often as needed. I would say typically once you have done certain intermediate developments of your model or module of the algorithm, in that case, you should really try to translate to see if there's any error. Usually, 
uh, translating the algorithm into the TLA plus since we cannot actually directly model check the plus cat algorithm. So translating it is a very good way to find if there's any error in your algorithm. Okay, it will only be checked when you do the translation. It's very important to note. I'm gonna write it down here. Okay. So you should really think about whenever we are doing the translation. Oh, you know what? I can have more space over here. So several points you want to really note. Number one, translate, uh, number one, model checking cannot be done directly on Pascal algorithm. Cannot be performed directly on, directly upon Pascal. So if you only got this part over here without this part, then it's useless for the tool, right? Number two, translate to translate the plus cal algorithm and I'll write in parentheses, we are translating it into the so-called TLA plus predicates. TLA plus predicates. And for those of you who still remember some stuff, what you can look it up back in 3342, the TLA plus predicate here, you know what? It's actually something you're quite familiar with back in 3342. It's called a before after predicates. All right? That's something I'll try to briefly walk you through. Uh, once we have added the labels into the uh, Pascal algorithm to make the translation output more informative. So it's so-called a before-after predicate. Before-after predicates. You know, basically a predicate upon the before and after states to really uh, specify the updates of the system. I'll give you example as we walk through. Okay. So translate the Pascal algorithm into TLA plus predicates whenever you have some intermediate developments into whenever an intermediate version of the algorithm is done so as to find errors. And over here, when I say errors, I really didn't mean any logical error. You can only find out logical errors when you actually do the model checking, which we haven't talked about just yet. We will, but very soon. And the errors over here I'm really talking about is more like a syntax error or type errors. For example, if you miss any labels or if you miss any semicolon or if you are using maybe values in an inconsistent way, that would be type error or syntax error, All right? So that's about what you should really keep in mind. You want to make sure every time you make some meaningful developments or meaningful progress on your uh, Pascal algorithm, you must hit the button on the IDE to really get a translated uh, TLA plus predicates, which, which are essentially before after predicates that you already know about. And what about this little gap over here, right? That's also some, something you will have to write manually. So the only part that can be automatically translated for you is only this part, right? Only this part. So this part over here, let me also write it down explicitly. So that's the TLA plus specification or TLA plus predicates. You can think about encoding the states of your system. Ultimately, these states will be used in some finite transition diagram, which we can definitely visualize using some other tool, which also has been installed on the remote lab. I'm going to show to you, right? One thing at a time. The final gap I would like to talk about is over here. Oh, sorry, too thick. This part over here is the final part, which I haven't really developed together with you just yet, but I will very soon. This part over here is the so-called properties that you have to declare for your system. But to really model check them, you will have to invoke the TLC checker. We are still in the editor of the IDE, but we haven't gone to the uh, TLC checker just yet, but we will. Okay. So this part over here will be 
the Boolean properties. And they will be to be added to TLC checker for verification. Meaning that once we invoke the TLC checker, we have to somehow refer to these Boolean properties. I'm going to show to you how you can declare Boolean properties. The syntax should not be too surprising to you. They should be rather straightforward to look at. That's something we'll take a look. Okay. All right, so that's about what you should really know in terms of uh, what should be manual and what should be automated. Just don't get confused. And there's another very important thing that you really want to know. You should never ever try to modify this part over here. This part is only meant to be updated whenever you click on the translation button, right? You never want to, for example, you might say, I will just go back to maybe this part over here. I just maybe want to modify rather than zero over here. I'm going to modify that to be three. If I, you know, somehow believe that's really the way to go. No, never ever try to modify any part of the uh, translated. Uh, translation that was automatically generated for you. Never do that, all right? Okay, let's now write it down. So this part here, very important to note. Okay, this part over here. Never modify any part of this, parts of this manually. Whenever you think that part should be really updated, you should really just hit on the translation button because you actually did some modification on this part over here. Okay. All right, so that's about uh, understanding about the structure. So this structure over here will be applicable for all the subsequent labs and also example that we're gonna go through. So it's really valuable for you to really make sure I understand uh, this part at least. And the next part will be, let's now really do some labeling and which will help us on reading or interpreting the generated TLA plus specification. Let's do that in the next video.